Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, I know there's a lot of you joining from uh, different kind of places in the world. Welcome to the Faster Data Insights with uh, Power BI. We're going to have a very exciting day. Uh, my name is Dandy Wine. I'm a technical product uh, marketing manager for Power BI. And I'm actually uh, glad to be here in the studio with Michael Theodore. Now, we have a very uh, great agenda that we're going to go through today. is First of all, Michael is going to take us to the uh, introduction to Power BI. And, and quite honestly, Michael has been focusing on this for quite a bit. Uh, you would almost say that Power BI is this little baby child that uh, went into general availability or that was born yesterday. Uh, and then we're going to go and drill down into uh, some of the topics uh, in terms of data discovery. So we have Matt Mason coming up talking about data discovery using Power Query. Then we're gonna have uh, Matthew Roach uh, talking about the data uh, stewardship experience with Power BI. And of course, we're gonna focus a lot on the visualization capabilities that we do have within the product. So Sandy is gonna lead us to Power View. We're gonna transition that to uh, Audi Short, who's gonna lead us to Power Map, bringing us some really rich 3D visualizations. And then we're gonna look on how we're gonna share and collaborate with this by moving this over to a Power BI site. Now, one of the stellar features we'll be drilling down into as well is uh, Adam Wilson is gonna lead us to Q&A, which allows you to query your data model and bring rich visualizations uh, just by using natural language query. And then, uh, we're gonna bridge that off with the capabilities we have in terms of data management gateway, how we refresh to on-premise data, and then we'll wrap it up and uh, look on how you can get access and get started with uh, Power BI. Uh, I know some of you want to probably generate some Twitter activity around the event and so on, so feel free to use the hashtag uh, Power BI or hashtag MVA Jumpstart. Uh, you can also include the Microsoft Virtual Academy who's been a generous host for this event, uh, as, as part of your uh, Twitter messages and so on. During the sessions, we have a panel of people that will be mon uh, monitoring the uh, Q&A that is asked during the sessions, and I will make sure that each of the presenters actually gets uh, the questions and uh, uh, can look at the questions. If you're not part of the Microsoft Virtual Academy community yet, we've got over one million registered uh, st uh, students and users uh, and you can get points for every activity on the event. We have a special code for the uh, Power BI event, obvious reason that's uh, the code you need to enter for that one is Power BI. And then with that, I'd like to uh, welcome and transition to uh, Michael Theodore. Uh, Michael, before we start, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, so I'm, um, I'm the senior product manager on, uh, on Power BI, so I've been working uh, with the program managers, with the engineering team, uh, really around just the delivery of Power BI into market. So very excited about that. Uh, being at Microsoft now for a little while, I, sent, I think uh, we started fairly uh, around the same time, so about uh, six, seven years ago. So mm -hmm. uh, it's been a very exciting journey. It's a great product, and uh, we're very excited to uh, make it available to you uh, today. Perfect. Give it a go. Okay, sounds great. So again, what uh, the intent is for the next... 45 minutes or so is just to really give you a general understanding of what the product does. We're going to walk through all the core features uh, so that you understand uh, the core problems that we're really trying to solve with it, uh, the trends we're seeing in market, and then the rest of the day, uh, it's going to be uh, really engineering in here, showing you uh, the specifics of each of the individual features. So I want to give you an overview of how everything fits together. Uh, okay, so as we think about just the changing world of data, there's a couple of core trends uh, that we're uh, really building to. Uh, one, it's a, the whole big data theme that everybody uh, is talking about these days. And that's around really, uh, one is the data explosion. So we're seeing a, a large uh, increase in the amount of data that's available out there. The really interesting one also is that the majority of this increase is from new data types. So if you think about the variety of data types that uh, end users are trying to get answers from and to do analysis on top of, that's one of the problems we're really trying to solve with the tools, is how do I connect to a broader variety of different types of data, connect that data together so I can get some smart intelligence out of it. So that's one area uh, of, the, uh, of the investment. Another core area of investment is really uh, delivering uh, BI and, and the analytic capabilities out to end users in the way that they like to work. So that uh, spans across m a multiple different devices. Uh, that also spans as they think about themselves um, and how they like to work 
uh, at their desk, the productivity suite. How can we leverage the productivity suite to be able to deliver analytic capabilities in a more intuitive way uh, for users uh, in the tools that they use every day? And uh, that's what we're doing with delivering BI uh, into Office. So we'll talk about some of the new innovations we're doing with Office as well. So that's a, that's a lot of fun. Um, if we think about the offering, there's two different components to the offering. One is, as I'm a business analyst and I'm in the products, uh, analyzing the data, working with the data, that authoring experience, that creation experience, uh, is all about Excel. And we continue to transform Excel, uh, so that is a great tool for, for working with data. And there's a couple of different elements that we've introduced and new features that we've introduced into Excel, and we're going to go through those today. Um, the first is around the area of discovery. So if I think about the biggest challenge for most people when they're working with data, and I think everybody uh, viewing today will, will agree with me, it's just finding the data that I need to analyze and then getting it into a shape or a format where I can actually analyze it. Um, and that's really the, the prime purpose of uh, a, a new feature that we introduced called Power Query. It's around data discovery, and we're going to uh, talk to it in, in a lot of detail today. Um, so we'll cover that in depth. The next is once I've got my data inside of Excel, it's really about how do I uh, analyze the data? How can I model it out? How can I create my custom measures, my KPIs, and so forth, uh, and uh, really analyze that data very quickly. So if I'm uh, trying to analyze a lot of data, we're talking about multiple millions of rows of data, um, how can I actually process that in a way that's, that's very quick? And we have some new in-memory processing that we introduced into Excel uh, in 2013 uh, natively, and we'll, uh, that's really a, sort of a prime focus of that. And then once I've got my data modeled out uh, from multiple different data sources, I've got it just ready. Now I want to be able to explore that data visually. I want to be able to tell a story with that data. Uh, and we're doing a lot in product inside of Excel to really enrich Excel with some proper uh, data visualizations. And we'll talk about that in more detail as well. So that's all just native Excel. That's the journey that Excel is on uh, for working with data. What we're also introducing, what we announced this week, is the Power BI for Office 365 service. And that's a great complement uh, to the capabilities that I have in Excel when I want to now share that out with colleagues across my organization. I want to collaborate on those reports. I want to access those reports from wherever I happen to be. And those are all capabilities uh, that the Power BI for Office 365 service uh, provides. And we're going to step through each of those features so everybody has sort of uh, a general understanding around uh, core capabilities and product. So let's focus on uh, what we're doing inside of uh, Excel around being able to work with data. The first, uh, as I mentioned, is really around this Power Query feature. And Power Query is a great way for me to uh, discover data. We've introduced a new uh, ability to just search for data from within Excel. Uh, and now, as an end user, uh, as, I, as I search for different data sets that are available, I can search for data that's publicly available, and we're making that data searchable by maintaining what we call a public data catalog. And the public data catalog is where Microsoft is indexing really the world's data. If we think about all the data that's available out there online, uh, we think about the data.gov initiative, we think about all that data that's uh, trapped inside of Wikipedia uh, that you might want to analyze, um, lots and lots of data out there. And making sure that uh, we make it a lot easier for people who might want to leverage that data to enrich their analysis to be able to find it. And we're going to show you an example of that today. Um, the next is about once I've connected or have discovered the data that I have, Power Query really gives me a very uh, intuitive way to be able to shape that data. So if I think about being able to transform the data, um, get it into the right format, um, breakout columns, all that kind of stuff, uh, as well as being able to merge different data sets together. Uh, Power Query makes that process a lot, lot easier. So we're going we're gonna to take a look at that uh, today as well. Now, once I've got my data inside of Excel, I've imported it, uh, being able to really analyze the data, that's where the Power uh, Pivot feature comes in. So Power Pivot is a, a feature that we've uh, introduced back in 2010. In Excel 2013, it became just native functionality inside of, uh, inside of Excel. And what this allows me to do is process the data in memory, which means that I can uh, crunch hundreds of millions of rows of data very, very quickly. 
um, as well as model that data out. So adding KPIs, custom measures, adding my own IP to this data that I've I pulled from multiple different data sources is the prime focus uh, of Power Pivot. And, and our business analysts and financial analysts out there really working with Excel every day really, really enjoy the ease of use of this feature. And then finally, um, the uh, product is really evolving in terms of uh, the data visualizations that we're providing in product. So Power View is a feature that we introduced into Excel uh, back in uh, the 2013 timeframe, so not that long ago. And Power View is an environment where it's, a, it's just a blank canvas where I can lay out my different charts and graphs, visually interact with them, explore the data, um, and really sort of uh, find hidden patterns in the data very, very easily. And we've also continued to extend the visualizations we have in Excel with exciting new capabilities like Power Map. And Power Map, uh, currently in preview, but will be launching soon, uh, is one of those visualizations that really allow me to explore the data in 3D. It was a great um, cross-divisional uh, exercise with Microsoft Research, the Bing team, the Excel team, to bring a new way of working with data right into Excel. And uh, we'll uh, see that in a lot of detail today as well. And I'll uh, give you a, a quick uh, view of it um, in my demo in a bit. All right, so that's just the authoring experience inside of Excel. Now let's talk about the new service, this Power BI for Office 365. What is it? What does it do? What are the benefits? So first of all, what you get with Power BI for Office 365 is the ability to start to share workbooks out through what we refer to as the BI sites. And the BI sites really enable a number of very important things uh, when I'm working with data. So the first is when I'm working with these files inside of Excel, those, those workbooks are fairly large because now I'm working with data. Um, and what I need to be able to do is open those large workbooks in the browser. And what uh, we've built into the platform, into Power BI for Office 365, is this ability to now open up workbooks that are up to 250 megabytes in size. And remember, that's, that's compressed data, so that's actually a lot of data in those workbooks. And I can open those up, I can view those, I can interact with them with the uh, performance that I would expect to see right in the browser. The other experience I get with Power BI Sites is this very visual image that you see here. And we'll, we'll show you that in real time as well. But um, the ability to have live tiles that show me snapshots of what's inside of those reports. So now I can, I can scan a lot of different reports that are in the environment very quickly to locate the data that I'm looking for without having to open each file up. So that's very important. Another core capability that we built into Power BI Sites and this is one that our customers really, really enjoy is in a lot of organizations, there's one or two people on a team and they really focus on maintaining the data for the rest of the team, you know, creating data views uh, that the rest can kind of consume. Now, a lot of these individuals, they don't want to create the finished reports a lot of the time for, um, uh, for individuals on the team, their teammates. They might just want to maintain the query itself and let other individuals build their own reports off of those queries. Uh, and that's really what this notion of being able to share queries through Power BI is all about. So now in Excel, with that Power Query feature, I can build out very sophisticated uh, data views, pulling from multiple different data sources, cleaning up that data, and then I can publish that in to the service, into Power BI, and my colleagues can locate, find those data queries that I'm maintaining, and they can consume that and they can build their own reports off of that. So that, um, that ability to really collaborate around data is a new experience that we're bringing uh, through the Power BI experience. The other interesting things in how we've implemented this is as I'm that person maintaining these queries, sharing these queries out with other individuals across the organization, I also get a lot of diagnostic information, so analytics, um, around who's accessing the queries that I'm providing, how often are they being used. And this gives me a sense for how useful these uh, data sets that I'm sharing with other individuals actually are. And uh, so that's a, that's a great uh, view that I get through the Power BI sites. And you see a, an image of it here. Also, um, as I think about security uh, through data built into the platform, if I were to share one of my queries with another individual, that individual might not have access to the underlying data that that query is pulling from. Now, what I can do as that end, as that end user is I can actually request access to the underlying data 
And what will happen is a workflow will get kicked off, and the DBA, the person who's actually sitting uh, uh, in IT that maintains that, that uh, database, can actually decide whether or not they want to grant access to that end user. So uh, really thinking about the end-to-end -end scenario uh, very closely. And all of that capability set really built into the platform. The next really important element of working with data uh, in a cloud-based solution like Power BI for Office 365 is making sure that the data in your reports are fresh. So what we've built into the platform is this ability for me to build my workbook, connect to on-premise data, publish that workbook into the cloud, and then from the cloud, the system can reach back on-premise and refresh the data. Now, that's all enabled through um, an agent we call the Data Management Gateway. IT sets up this Data Management Gateway on-premise, and it's the Data Management Gateway that manages the connection of the reports that live in the cloud back to the on-premise data that lives on-premise to allow that scheduled data refresh to happen. Now, a very important um, sort of benefit is, of this is that now you can deploy very quickly a cloud-based BI environment uh, for reporting, but not for, you know, not have to move the bulk of your data up to the cloud to uh, really enable the data refresh to happen. You have this great sort of hybrid scenario where you've got your reporting in the cloud and you can maintain your data on premise. So customers very excited about that particular feature as well. Okay, so um, the next benefit of Power BI is as I think about this notion of data search. So I talked a little bit about um, now in Excel, I can search for data that lives online. And we're maintaining uh, this great searchable engine uh, for data called the, the public data catalog. Well, with the Power BI service, I now get a private version of that data search engine as well. We call it the private data catalog. And what that enable, enables is for IT to use all that power of being able to search for data to index their corporate data as well. And now, as an end user, when I'm inside of Excel, uh, I'm struggling to find the data that I'm looking for. I can just search for data that's uh, available to me. And what I'll get back is not just that public data that Microsoft's maintaining for me, but also get corporate data that IT's maintaining and, um, and making available for me as well. So now I'll get back all those IT uh, data so sets and data sources, and I can um, very easily choose the data set that I'm looking for, and the system will connect me to that data source directly. So uh, that's, a, that's a great benefit. The third thing that the data catalog enables is as my colleagues are sharing these queries into Power BI, those queries also get indexed with the data catalog. So what that means is that as I'm searching for data, I'm able to pull back corporate data, public data, and all the queries that uh, colleagues across Microsoft are maintaining for me. Um, and by Microsoft, I mean my organization. I just happen to work for Microsoft. And I'll give you a, a great example of this. So um, as part of Power BI, we have uh, the Power Query uh, add-in available. And we had the Power Query add-in in preview um, over the last uh, year or so. And we wanted to track download numbers of Power Query. We wanted to see how successful Power Query uh, was going to be. Um, now, I was about to uh, go off and, and figure out how to build my report to, to see what the download numbers uh, were on, on Power Query. But before I did that, I actually did an online search um, for Power Query downloads. And I found that there was somebody else inside Microsoft that was already maintaining that query. And I was able to just connect to that query and, and see what the download numbers were. So it saved me a lot of time and really you know, a great real world example for me to see uh, the benefits of being able to collaborate uh, across data sets and, and very easily uh, leverage the work of other people um, across the organization. So just an example of, of this in action. All right, um, switching gears a little bit. Um, the um, benefit around and, and the sort of a real trend around mobility nowadays. So um, being able to access my reports from anywhere is a very, very real a requirement for a lot of organizations with a mobile workforce. And we're enabling uh, mobility uh, in two ways. One is all those reports that now live in Power BI uh, are viewable in HTML5. So what that means is on any device, um, I can connect, I can navigate to that report, and I can interact with that report through the browser in HTML5. Um, so that's, um, 
that's a, a very important part of the strategy. The, very, the second really important part of the strategy is around providing native applications for mobile uh, BI as well. And uh, we're very excited. We've got a mobile BI uh, application for Windows available today. And what this allows me to do is, as you can see here in this image, is I get an app for my Surface uh, or whatever Windows 8.1 device I happen to be on. And I can navigate uh, and see all my favorite reports that live in Power BI. I can open up one of those live tiles. I can explore the report. And if I, if I have a concern or I want to email out to a colleague, I can very easily email out from the app to a colleague. It provides a screenshot of that report and a link to the original report back into Power BI. So a great uh, mobile experience for being able to really take my reports with me on the go uh, and be able to access them from anywhere. Now, um, in the coming months, we'll also support uh, iOS. So um, you know, making these applications more broadly available on different platforms is a core strategy of ours. OK, last but not least is as we think about having this great optimized BI environment in the cloud for working with data, um, we really want to provide new ways of interacting with data. And uh, you know, we really focus on just the natural way that people work and how do we um, provide experiences um, that are intuitive uh, for how people interact with data. And one of those capabilities uh, we um, call Q&A. And Q&A is a feature of Power BI that allows me to type in natural language um, the questions I have of my data. Uh, and the system will understand the semantics, understand the, the intent of my question. It'll translate that into a query uh, going down to the, to the models in the environment, and it'll present me on the fly with uh, charts and graphs, interactive charts and graphs of that data. And it'll choose the visualizations uh, that it feels are best to present that data, and then it allows me to sort of rotate between different visuals of that data if I choose. Um, so a great way for now more people across my organization, people that might not want to build their own queries. They might not want to build their own reports. They just have simple questions of the data that they want to type uh, and get back answers to, uh, providing them with a, a way to interact with data as well. And our customers really have latched on to this particular feature, and uh, they're using it in great, great ways. So uh, also a great capability of the platform. So with that, what I'd really like to do is uh, show you the product in action. So let's, let's take a look at a very high level, end-to-end -end, uh, demo uh, of the product. So let me tee this up. Here at Microsoft, we have an initiative um, called uh, Smart Building. And essentially what it is is you know, Microsoft's trying to be very smart about uh, energy consumption across, um, across Microsoft. And the, uh, we're going to take a look at a facilities list of all the different buildings at Microsoft. Uh, that's what I refer to as small data. It's, a, a, it's 80 rows of data you know, given to me by facilities. Uh, that's just in Excel. We're going to then uh, connect that to HD Insight, which is our big data server living uh, in Azure. Uh, now, that HD Insight service is collecting uh, feeds from all the different energy sensors across Microsoft. Um, so we're going to be able to um, take a look at that data. We're going to blend that with our small data, so connecting small data and big data. And then we're going to search for some public data. We're going to blend some public data into that as well. And we're going to, we're going to visualize that and, and, uh, and see if we can find any interesting uh, outcomes. So with that context, uh, what you should be seeing now is uh, just Excel. Here's this small data set that I referred to. This was, this was sent to me by, uh, by facilities. And this is a list of all the different uh, buildings at Microsoft. It gives the location of those buildings, uh, the actual square footage of the building, how many levels that building has. OK. So first thing we want to do is go into Power Query. And as you can see here, Power Query has um, a lot of different uh, sources of data that you can directly connect through to. Um, and one of those is going to be this HD Insight service that Microsoft has. And HD Insight, is, again, is our big data uh, Hadoop technology that lives in Azure. So I'm going to connect through to, uh, to that. Um, so we've got a service called Sensor Data. There we go. And 
when we jump into that, we can see the Power Query shows me the data sources that are available there. Now, I'm going to connect through to these uh, this energy uh, sensor readings. And when I get back is uh, obviously a view that I need to do some transformations to before I can analyze it. First, I've got some encrypted data here that I want to get rid of. Uh, and I got a couple blank columns, so I want to just very quickly remove those columns. Um, next, I want to use the first row as my column headers. I can very quickly do that. And then I've got to change the actual data type. So everything's come back as a uh, text format. And I'm just going to change this quickly to be uh, a date column. And then I'm going to change these uh, to be numeric. So uh, you can see how quickly I can change uh, data types here. Now, every step that I, I do to the data to, to change it, to get it ready for analysis, is captured here on the right. And you can see applied steps. Now, that's very important because it really logs all the changes that I've made to the data. I can go back a couple steps if I want to make um, you know, modifications to, uh, to the query that I, I'm building here. Uh, and also, as other people go to consume this query, they can also see the steps that I've taken to transform the data. So uh, very important that we capture that. Now I'm just going to apply that and uh, brings that into, uh, into Excel. Now I want to blend my facilities report, which is here, with that, uh, that additional uh, query that we just built out to HD Insight. And I can do that very easily by just saying, hey, you know, I want to merge these two. I'm going to merge facilities with my energy data. And I'm just going to join these based on ID. I say, OK, thank you very much. I get a few questions around um, accessibility of the query. And then we say, OK. And now what I get is a view in Power Query that says, hey, what fields do you want to include from your second query? And I'm going to include everything except for that ID. And we can see it's now merged the two together. Um, and I'm just, I'm just going to say, OK, that's great. Thank you very much. And now I've got a combined view of those two data sets coming into Excel, uh, and both of those refreshable uh, on demand. So, um, so that's good. Now let's take a look back in Power Query. So quick, quick question here, Michael. Yeah, sure. So what we're doing here was actually merging multiple data sets. So I noticed you had data sets that you were pulling in from uh, HD Insight. But basically, I can just combine any kind of data set, no matter where that data literally resides, bring that back and merge that together. I mean, I can think of scenarios where customers have like CRM applications and they have some external data, and we could merge that all together and bring that into the visualization, right? Ab absolutely right. Okay, yeah, that's, so that, that, that's stunning. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, and, and it's it, that list of connectors is just going to grow over time. And if you actually, you know, uh, take a look at those drop-down lists that I showed mm -hmm. you, there's so many different data sets that I can connect to uh, today. CRM online is a great example. Exchange is another one. We've got some really interesting, Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, yeah. we've got some really mm -hmm. interesting ones in there. Mm -hmm. So there's a great, uh, customers are really finding interesting new ways to, to um, pull reports uh, together quickly. All right, so um, we also talked a little bit, Dandy, about this notion of the, the online search thing, right? So let's take a look at what I mean by that. So I want to take a look at or find data around the weather in Redmond. So I can just say weather Redmond, Washington, and search for that. And what will happen is Excel goes out to this public data catalog mm -hmm. that we're maintaining, and uh, we've We've indexed um, you know, a lot of very useful data along that. So one of, the, one of the data sets here you can see is coming from Wikipedia. So Wikipedia itself actually has a lot of data sets in it um, that are just hard to, to analyze, get access to. right? Um, and we've, we've indexing all that, all that data from Wikipedia to make it easier to consume. So here's an example. I found a data set um, for the weather in Redmond. It always rains, right? Uh, it pretty much always rains, which makes it easy to work. <laughs> um, if you uh, now, uh, what we can do is let's merge this this data set uh, with um, with what we're working with on our data uh, our combined data view. So um, again, I, as I did before, you just need to find a common key uh, to blend that, and then uh, select the the fields that you want to bring in. So we're just going to bring in one field here, which is the mean average temperature in the area. So to quickly do that. Um, now, this is unique in terms of I've got, uh, well, first, this is all text coming back. 
Um, so I've got to figure out how to convert that. Um, but also I've got uh, numbers and letters um, and characters. So I need to be able to split this out. So I can very easily split this out based on number of characters. Uh, I'm going to say based on two. Um, and now what Power Query does is it'll split that out for me. Here you can see it converted uh, the numbers uh, directly to numbers for me, so I don't have to do that additional step. And I've, you know, I've got this other column that I might not really want in my view, so I can just remove that. All right. So now let's apply that. And now we've got a nice view that we can analyze. So let's go and uh, take a look at, uh, at this view. So one of the visualizations I mentioned um, that are currently in preview soon uh, will be GA is this, this Power Map feature. So I want to analyze this data in Power Map. So I'm just going to say, please send this to Power Map. It'll take a look at all that data that we've just pulled together from three different data sources. Again, small data, big data, public data. Um, and uh, because it's geocoded, so we actually had that facilities list gave the geocoding for each of the different buildings. We're going to be able to plot that data onto the map and we're going to explore that in 3D and see if we discover anything uh, that might be um, kind of interesting. So here it's done that. Um, and we can see that, let me just give us a little bit more room. If I zoom in, let's see, we'll add map labels. So we get the power of Bing here. Uh, we can see this is Bellevue, this is Redmond, that's where Microsoft's located. I can kind of do a little bit of navigating here. Now I'm going to take a look at um, the energy consumption. So we have the actual energy consumption for each of these buildings. I can tweak the view to make it a little easier to read. So we're just going to slim down the, the columns here. And then as I rotate around, uh, we can see some of the buildings actually uh, have uh, more energy consumption than others, right? Um, now I can hover and I can see the energy consumption, but what I can't see is what those buildings are. So let's add that to our view, building names. And uh, now we can hover over these and see, well, uh, we've got this building called the Bravern. Now the Bravern's one of Microsoft's building in a big tower in Bellevue. Um, so we can see why there, the, there might be a lot of energy consumption with that building. Uh, if I take a look at sort of our Redmond locations over here, this cluster, uh, we can see we've got a lot of energy consumption in the commons mixer. Now, that uh, actually makes sense. So the commons mixer is this large mall in the center of Microsoft where everybody goes and has lunch. And it has essentially a ton of different kitchens, and they're all cooking, and all the Microsoft employees go there. So I can see why there'd be a lot of energy usage in that particular building. Uh, there's another one here, Building 40. So Building 40 actually has a lot of servers in it. So I can see whether there'd be a lot of energy consumption there. And then some other ones, um, Building 121, there is no real logical reason um, that I know of, or intuitive reason why Building 121 would have a lot of energy consumption. So that's interesting. We might want to explore that in a little bit more detail. So let's take a look at, um, now we brought in uh, another data view as well. We brought in that public data. So let's add a layer of data. Uh, to analyze that. So uh, I can take a look at um, this sort of average mean temperature. Oh, here we go, that I brought in from the public data. Uh, I'm going to want to explore that. I'm going to see that as a heat map in the, in the area. I want to take a look at the average. And I'm going to want to take a look at that over time. So uh, let's take a look at uh, our date. We can see that's analyzable. And then I can also tweak this view a little bit uh, to see the radius of influence and usually uh, bring that down a little bit. Um, okay. And then if we go back to layers, we go back to layer one. I also want to take a look at layer one. Uh, just give me a second. Here we go. Um, and I want to analyze that time as well. So what I've got now is a view that I can run over time and actually see, I'm going to zoom in here so you can see this. I can run this over time and I can actually see the correlation between energy usage and the temperature outside. So if I run this, you can oh, uh, make sure we're looking at average over time. Uh, so if I run this, you can see how the correlation between energy usage uh, and the weather is very closely 
uh, sort of calibrated. So that's interesting. Obviously, intuitively, we know that um, if I think about energy consumption in a building, um, if I think about how efficient that, en that building is, we might want to explore to see whether or not there are some buildings that are more sensitive to cold weather or warm weather, and then that might be a leading indicator that there might be an insulation problem with that building or something wrong with the HVAC system, whatever it happens to be. So let's take a look now at a great tool that we have to explore this data um, using Q&A. So here, here's the B, Power BI sites. So as I mentioned, uh, BI sites have these great uh, live tiles, so I can see all the data sort of in those reports, and I can see live views of my, my different reports. Um, what I also get with the Power BI sites is this Q&A feature. So let me now uh, just quickly type, uh, so total energy usage by date. And what that gives me is a nice uh, visual of the total energy usage uh, for Microsoft over time. You can see it's lower in the summer, higher in the winter. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. But what I'm doing is I'm just typing in natural language questions I have of the data, uh, and the system is understanding uh, what I'm typing and presenting me uh, with views from my data. So here if I go total energy by building, we can see a stack ranked view of the uh, buildings that use the most energy at Microsoft. Braverne, uh, again, that, that large tower uh, uses a lot of energy. The common mixers, which is the mall, building 40. And then building 20, 121, which is just a regular old building, uh, is sort of the fourth largest energy consumer uh, at Microsoft. That's, that's, that's interesting. So we might want to take a look at that in more detail. So let's take a look at energy usage, total energy usage sort of versus people. If I can type versus people by building. Now this is an interesting view as well. So basically what we're asking is um, what's the energy usage based on the number of people that are in that particular building. And if you take a look you can see sort of this nice sort of um, natural uh, line where we, the more you, people in the building uh, the larger energy uh, consumption of that particular building. So uh, obviously the Braver has over 60,000 people in it, uses a lot of energy. Building 120 uh, has maybe, looks like maybe 5,000 people in it, doesn't use a lot of energy. And then again, this building 121 uh, relatively uses, it's an outlier, uses less, has less people in it, um, but uses a lot of energy. Uh, the commons mixer, that big mall, uh, this is essentially where everybody goes for lunch. Not a lot of people actually uh, stationed in that building, don't actually have offices in that building, um, but uses a lot of energy. So you can really quickly see the outliers. Anyway, so moving on, let's take a look at um, building sort of 121 versus my building, which is building 109. See a big difference in terms of energy usage. Uh, we might want to take a look at this now just over time. So, by date. Um, and now comparing sort of energy consumption for both these two buildings uh, over time, you can see that building 109, if we use that as sort of our, our base measure, uh, building 109 really um, uses much less energy in the winter than this building 121. And I think that is a possible indication that building 121 might be an older building, might have a problem with its insulation, its windows, whatever it happens to be, its HVAC system. Um, but it is um, one of those areas where I, uh, Microsoft can now go explore, uh, uh, see what the root cause of the energy inefficiency is in that building, and then you know, course correct if necessary. Mm -hmm. So great sort of end-to-end -end view of, of what you can do to analyze data uh, using some of the different features in Excel and in Power BI for Office 365. Now, now before you move on here, Michael, there's something that I really want to point out in, in terms of Q&A, right? Right. One of the things that I think is, is really phenomenal with Q&A is that you don't need to build any reporting at all. It just brings the visualization to you, and, and, and actually it's like it, it becomes 
almost addictive, right? Because you want to go in there and start asking your questions and you keep discovering new insights into the data that you typically within a pre-canned or a pre-built report necessarily don't see, right? So, yeah. so that, that data exploration and then the consumption of, of the data you combine with Power Query, put that into the workbook, upload that, enable it for Q&A. I mean, I think that's just phenomenal. Uh, I mean, I remember myself being a, being a DBA for many years and having uh, built a lot of reports uh, in the past is whenever you present someone a report, the day after they come back at you and ask like, well, can you make this look different? And I also want to be able to see this view and that view. And those are the things that Q&A definitely resolves in, in, in terms of that capability, right? It really is very engaging. And mm -hmm. it is it's a completely new way to interact with your data, which is what our customers really like. The, the thing that um, continually our customers are raving about when it comes to features like this is that it allows them to bring um, the, the usage of data to more people across the organization that don't have necessarily the same skill sets as people who are financial analysts or business analysts really working with the data every day. Um, and it allows them to make smarter decisions because they now are more informed based off the data yeah. um, because they can, mm -hmm. they can actually access it. Which is kind of the same with Power Query, right? When, I mean, when I'm building, I know where my data sources sit and I can merge and combine that together. But if I want to present that to, to someone in such a way that the person doesn't really need to know on how you collected all that data together, it's just as simple of sharing out that work that uh, query, putting that in the data catalog, and then they could use it from there, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And a great example is actually uh, one of our previous customers was Mediacom. Um, so let's talk about a little bit about what Mediacom does. So Mediacom is um, a large uh, media agency. They've got uh, 4,600 um, uh, employees uh, across the business mm -hmm. and essentially what they do is um, they're focused on working with their clients to build um, campaigns and those campaigns span uh, print ads, span the web, uh, span social media uh, campaigns and all this and they've got a need to be able to really report to see what the success of those campaigns are um, and they need to build reports off of um, you know uh, 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 the different uh, social engines such as Facebook and, and Twitter, combine that with Nielsen data, combine that with Comscore and, and a lot of the, the other data sets that are out there. And traditionally what they were doing was um, they had a small team that uh, focused on this, mm -hmm. this reporting for each of the campaigns. It would take the team of people uh, a couple of weeks to build these reports from all the different data sources. Um, and then they would refresh those reports, get those, up, uh, those updates every couple of weeks. With Power BI, what they did was they were able to very quickly create these reports. Now, instead of a team, it was just one individual that was able to build these reports uh, in a matter of hours instead of a, a matter of weeks. So really, a lot of benefits in terms of just getting the reporting in place very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, the benefits that they saw also were that because they were able to now refresh the uh, data on a daily basis versus um, every couple of weeks, they were able to adjust the campaigns and, and optimize them. So uh, if they saw that particular uh, elements of the campaign weren't doing as well as others, they were able to course correct and apply resources in a different way, which actually created a lot of efficiencies uh, for their customers in terms of how resources were being allocated and saved each campaign you know, millions of dollars. So that, that was a, a great um, sort of real world win. The other interesting thing was as we think about these new technologies like Q&A, what they were able to do was set up Power BI in a way where their account managers now had access to be able to um, access that data, uh, ask questions of the data, and then engage with their clientele um, on a more regular basis. And now the clientele were, uh, they felt they, it was a, a great satis uh, increase in satisfaction from them because they could track uh, and see how well their campaigns were doing, how effective uh, the money that they were spending was being, and it really built a closer relationship between the account manager and the client um, because they now had that new way to kind of interact around the data. Uh, so uh, really built up um, a great system to be able to uh, see a lot, of, uh, a lot of benefits. So that's what, uh, what Mediacom was, was doing with the preview. Uh, there are great other uh, examples uh, that we've published around uh, companies like Trek, uh, around Revlon, um, 
uh, you know, Carnegie Mellon, these, uh, these organizations really exploring Power BI, uh, seeing some great benefits to some of the new technologies. Mm -hmm. So I encourage everybody to check those out. Yeah, I believe track bicycles, right? That's they're, right. They're doing something with like a GPS location on their bicycles and so on and be able to track where the track bikes are going. <laughs> That's right, yeah. yeah. So a, a lot of really innovative uh, solutions out there, really because of the breadth of different data sources that you can connect through to with Power BI. Now, now one of the questions that I get asked a lot, being a former DBA, is what, what is this Q&A? How does this work? Uh, someone, someone asked me at some point, like, hey, is this English query like we had it in SQL 2000s? And it always takes me some time to explain, no, that's not what it is. Like, what is Q&A built on? Is that, does that sit on... on yeah, so the way... The powered pivot model, right? Essentially, well, yeah. It, it's, um, it's actually a really clean solution. So the way that it all works is that I'll build out my power pivot model in Excel. Mm -hmm. And um, I can then publish out that power pivot model into the Power BI environment. And then I just select for that model to be one of the models that Q&A will query against. Mm -hmm. And then the system takes care of everything else. You know, I can start to type um, my, my semantics um, or my natural... Uh, question and uh, it'll it'll then query against that model and, and yeah. everything. Now, if I want to if I want to tune that model for the natural language experience, as I'm building out that model, I now have the ability to add additional semantics to the model. Mm -hmm. So that helps me continue to refine that model so that um, the questions and the words that my end users are using are recognized by the system and they'll get more accurate results. So that's mm -hmm. all built into the system as well. Okay. What else you want to show us? Well, I just really wanted to uh, point people uh, essentially to, well, invite them to join the MVA community um, and also uh, point them to uh, powerbi.com. So as you're thinking about, um, you know, talking to colleagues about what Power BI does or if you want to explore and find more information to get started, uh, go to powerbi.com. You can uh, get started really quickly today. You can do a trial of Power BI. It's a 30-day free trial. Um, uh, see what the environment looks like and download as part of that trial um, the latest version of Excel, install the add-ins, um, there's uh, great getting started guides to, to allow you to explore and, and play with the products as well. So power, powerbi.com is where I would uh, recommend that you go to get started. So when people sign up for like a uh, Power BI uh, trial, they just go to Power BI, they, they, they literally they sign up for their tenants and they're ready to go. And, I, and we got a lot of examples on that as well, right? So uh, if you could switch to my monitor real quick, there's, there's something that I actually wanted to show there is the, uh, so you mentioned a Power BI app. And, and if I look on the Power BI app, what I can do is I can, I can easily navigate uh, through my reports. Those reports will pull up. I can go back and forth between them. Uh, bring that into visualization. Uh, this is loading. As we're talking about the Olympics, actually one of the sample data sets that we, uh, that we have in the sample workbooks that we enabled on Power BI was the uh, historical Olympics. And, and I know that that's playing high with everyone now and which country is getting more medals and so on. But yeah, definitely the, 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 the app and then the sharing and collaboration we get within the app by just being able to, 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 to swipe through the workbooks and then being able to also uh, go to the sharing tab and say you could send that out by email. I think that's one of the key capabilities of the mobile app as well. You could just represent that view, right? Yeah, and, uh, and being uh -huh. connected to your reports from uh -huh. wherever you are is very yeah. important uh, mm -hmm. to a lot of our customers. Okay, yeah. perfect. All right, thank you so much, Dandy. You're welcome. Uh, as we're going to start with the next presenter, what we're going to do next is we have Matthew... I always mistake. Matt Mason coming up, uh, and he's going to talk to us about uh, the more advanced capabilities that we have with uh, Power Query. With that, Michael, I do want to thank you for your time. I know with uh, having a newborn baby being Power BI, you're <laughs> probably extremely and very busy. Uh, but yeah, thanks for being here today. No, great. And the entire team is super excited to have uh, the product now available uh, out there. It's just great working with you. Thank you. Thanks. So we'll be back in uh, 10 minutes with the next session. Thank you.